Uh, Councillor, how are you? Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Do, do you think um, the Constitution should be used to create new rights? Uh, Senator, I think the Constitution is an enduring document and that... Uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's been around a long time. It's enduring. Um, and I'm fond of it. You love it. I'm fond of it, too. But do you think it ought to be used to create new rights? Uh, Senator, I think it is constantly being interpreted, and the Supreme Court has, uh, through the 230 years of jurisprudence, has uh, found rights in it. Yeah. And if I am confirmed as an appellate judge, I would faithfully apply Supreme Court precedent. Yeah. Uh, but are you going to use it to try to create r new rights? Uh, Senator, uh, appellate court judges don't create new rights they take the record sure they below do. them sure they do counselor we've been we've both been at this a long time they do it all the time uh, um and then it goes up to the supreme court and the supreme court says yay or nay or sometimes they don't say anything um let me ask this what what barometer do should we use to decide whether a federal judge ought to create a new right or the people's elected representatives through a Congress or a legislature? What's the, what's the standard you use there? Uh, Senator, uh, we have co-equal branches of government. The legislature does the policy making, the judiciary. Yeah, but what's the standard? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we had this problem in the last administration. And if you could just answer my question, because five minutes just goes like that. What standard do you use personally uh, to decide whether a new right ought to be created by federal judge or by the United States Congress if it's a federal right? Uh, Senator, I would be applying precedent and precedent has I stipulate that you're going to apply precedent. I stipulate that. So let's take that off the table. What standard should be used to determine whether a new right ought to be created by a court, a federal judge, unelected, appointed for life, or a United States Congress? Senator, appellate courts have standards of review uh, when looking toward lower court decisions, and I would... Yeah, come on, Counselor, you're not answering my question. It's a real simple question, and you're very smart, and you know what I'm asking. You believe in a living Constitution, okay? I get that. That's a legitimate point of view. You say you don't understand what an originalist is, but I, 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 think, I don't think you're being candid there. But this is what... My, let me ask my question again. What standard should be used to decide if you're going to create a new right in the Constitution, whether that right ought to be created by a federal judge or the people's elected representative? Very simple. Senator, uh, the federal courts are of limited jurisdiction. The appellate courts sit in between a Supreme Court. Okay, you're not going to answer it. I, I get it. Um, when you were at the Brennan Center, you're still there, right? I'm on leave, sir. Okay, well, but when you were there, did you advocate uh, federal courts to create new rights under the Constitution? No, sir. You never did? No, sir. Okay. Uh, when the right you, to vote is protected in the Constitution and it's protected. So you, you never asked for new rights, you just said they're already there? Yes, sir. Okay. H how do you know a right's already there if it's not explicit? Uh, in the case of voting? No, 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 just in general. If, if, if I read your resume and it's not something's on there, well, that's a bad example. If you look at the Constitution and it doesn't, let's just say, let's say reparations, okay? Um, and it doesn't talk about reparations. How do you know whether a right should be granted if it's not there? That's what I understand you to be saying with the living Constitution. Uh, Senator, again, a case would not come before an appellate court unless parties presented an argument. I get that. I understand how a lawsuit's tried. How, let me ask you again. How do you know if a right's not explicit in the U.S. Constitution that it's really there? It's hiding. It's lurking. And we just have never seen it. Uh, Senator, uh, in Marbury versus Madison, the Supreme Court said that the Supreme Court uh, interprets the Constitution. Right. I would look to precedent. I would look to see... What if there's no precedent? Uh, 
there's always some precedent. See, here, <laughs> here's my problem, Counselor. This is where I think you're headed. I think what you want to do on the federal bench is advance a social agenda and rewrite the Constitution every other Thursday to advance a social agenda that you can't get by the voters through their elected representatives. Senator. Now, that's a legitimate um, thing to be for. This is America. You can believe what you want. But you spent your whole career doing that. And it bothers me that you're not defending that here, that you're dodging my questions. Senator. You're not the only nominee who's done that. It happened under the prior administration. It must be something in the water at the White House. But I'd respect you a lot more if you just up front said it. Senator, I believe in the value of precedent. I think it makes our system So do I, better. but that's got nothing to do with our discussion. We both know that. And I understand that you've been advised to say precedent, precedent, precedent. When in doubt, what's, is it raining outside? Precedent. But it inhibits our ability to have a rational discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you want to